Welcome along, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Life in the Fast Lane. Today, we are joined by a guest who has accomplished so much in the world of motorsport. He's done supercross, he's done motocross, cross country rallying, and he's won everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined by none other than CS Santosh. So, it feels so great to have you on the show. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. The pleasure is all mine, and I'm glad that we finally have this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. So, CS. Firstly, the, the first thing that we think of when you look at when we look at you and when we hear your name is Dakar. You are in your joint highest finisher at the Dakar Rally. How did you do that? How, how challenging is it? Well, well to be honest, uh, when I did uh, the first Dakar, I had no idea that I was going to do it. It was just something that uh, was a conversation. One thing led to another, and I had signed up to race the Dakar. So I went from a guy that was competing in India, racing the national circuit, to doing the raid the desert storm and then all of a sudden I found myself going to the Dakar Valley. Right. And when you say that you started out, I think you started out at the age of 17, right? Uh, more sport and all that? I think around 18, 19. I think, yeah, around 18. So how did you get into the sport firstly? So I think you wanted to be a software engineer if I'm not mistaken previously. Yeah, I think uh, you can say that because you know I went to a school, St. Joseph's Boys yeah. High School in Bangalore and of course uh, this uh, at this school we had uh, Sabir Badia who graduated from here yeah. and everybody then thought it was really cool to do what he did because he had hotmail yeah. and to see him being successful so I thought maybe I would want to do that as well Yeah. but then life had other plans. You just hopped in on a motorcycle and everything changed. Right? Yeah so I, I went to college you know, to pursue that uh, ambition of doing something academically but I think the motorcycle took me in a different direction. Right. And you started off with motocross and supercross and I think within a couple of years you became one of the best riders in India. How did that happen? How did you improve your skills and be better than you were previously? Well, um, I think it took me about three years to be the, the best there was in India. Yeah. And I think once I accomplished that, I wanted to do something in the Asian level. So I competed in the Asian motocross. I think my best finish was a, was a fifth in the Asian motocross. And from then on, um, I competed again in international events like in Dubai. Yeah. But after I'd done the whole motocross, supercross, dirt track thing, you know, I was looking for different avenues. And that's when cross country rally really came along. Right. And you say you compete in the dirt side of things. Why the dirt? Why not the tarmac? What, what was so attractive about this side of motorsport? Well, two, two reasons. You know, first, of course, like everybody else, you know, I'd watched uh, MotoGP and I thought it was really cool. So I did try my hand at uh, road racing, which was in Chennai. Yeah. I remember going up to Chennai and paying 500 bucks yeah. and renting a bike and going racing on the weekend. But it just so happened that after that race, there was some litigation uh, at the track and it shut it down for the next three years. Yeah. And then I had all this uh, energy and, and passion for the motorcycle and I had nowhere to go. Yeah. So the only other alternative was to take it off-road. And I happened to fall in love with it. And I also think that um, for an enthusiast, uh, the entry level for uh, to go racing off-road was really low. Yeah. So it was affordable for me to do it. So I was able to have all the fun that I wanted to on a motorcycle and it was affordable. So I kind of stuck to off-road. Right. And I think you are helping the affordability go even uh, to go one step further with the big rock motor park that you have. So how does that help out with youngsters who want to join in the off-road scene in India? So I remember when I was uh, competing in India, you know, um, I always had all these questions on on how does one like select the right gear or how does one improve his skills or where does one go from uh, competing in the nationals or the locals, what's the next step, mm -hmm. what is the right training procedure and I had no answers, you know, you had to look outside of India for those answers. Yeah. And I just thought that'd be so cool if I could have a facility which would cater to my needs, yeah. to give me what I need to compete at the Dakar. If I could achieve something with a facility like that, for sure, an amateur or an enthusiast would definitely benefit from that. Yeah. And so with Big Rock, we're trying to introduce people to off-road riding and also giving them access to a world-class facility. So it will help in their dreams, whether it was whether it's just to be a good rider yeah. or to someday take it up seriously, they can consider it. Right. And I think it plays a major role for your training as well, because Dhaka, as we know, is one of the most physically taxing and mentally taxing one went three taxing rallies in the world. How does your preparation at Big Rock help you and, you know, be better at the stage over there? Uh, well, well, the Dakar is a, is a really difficult race. 
So for sure, um, competing in, in competing in, in the rally, you need to be in top shape. Yeah. So for us, um, I have a big rock where I can go out and train. Yeah. And this allows me to train in India. You know, although it's difficult to find a place to uh, to be able to train and practice your skills. So. Yeah. I'm able to accomplish that in Big Rock, and of course, when I go out of India, I, I do train in Morocco, Dubai, yeah. where else that, that might take me. Right. And so, CS, you switched from supercross and motocross to cross country rallying, which is arguably one of the toughest forms of motorsport. And in your first rally, the Raid the Himalaya, you won. So, do you feel you had that natural rally instinct within you already? Yeah, I think when I did my first Raid the Himalaya, it was a big shock to me going from. Cross, uh, going from supercross, motocross, which was close competition, yeah. where you got to do practice laps, you kind of knew what was in store for you, yeah. and then going the cross country rally format where anything's possible. Yeah. So when I did the raid for me was a huge step, way out of my comfort zone, yeah. and I never actually thought that I would pursue a career in rallying because I just thought the guys that did rallying were, were a bit nuts, yeah. you know, because they have no idea where they're going and anything could happen. So yeah. I just I never imagined, but here I'm sitting racing one of the toughest valleys in the world. So yeah. like I said, you make your plans and then life has its own plans and you just go with it. Right. And then, as you said, you thought that the drivers, the riders in fact, were uh, rallying a bit nuts. And here you are now doing the Dakar for multiple years. You finished it. How does it feel when you go home, you, you watch the videos, you read the articles and realize that ah, that's me. I did that. Do you feel something like that? Yeah, for sure. You know, I had a lot of pride when I finished my first Dakar. Um, you know, it was a very tough year for me to line up to race the Dakar and then from then on to going finishing the Dakar, I had uh, Im immense satisfaction that I take in that first rally. And after that, you know, uh, I wanted to progress and be competitive, so I've been chasing that dream and finally this year being able to put in uh, two good stages and know that knowing that I have the speed to be a top 20 guy, yeah, I feel really proud of myself. So. It's, a, it's been a good journey so far. Right. And when we speak about this incredible rally, there are so many factors that come into mind. You have the wind, you have the terrain, you have the bike, you have the rider itself, the physical conditions. How many things can go wrong in Dakar and how do you control them? How do you make sure that they are in your way so that you can go on and finish as well as high as possible? Uh, well, the Dakar is an unpredictable race and not knowing where the race track is beforehand obviously adds a lot of challenge. And with the navigation and the long kilometers that we do, like 300 kilometers is a typical day in, in the life of a Dakar stage. So, yeah, that's, that's a pretty, pretty long stage. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that can happen around you, but uh, this is something that all of us kind of prepare for in the best of ability, yeah. is to be adaptable to changing circumstances. And all of us, I think, go to the Dakar uh, in the best shape possible. So. Yeah. Uh, all the training that we do during the year kind of helps us prepare for this one valley. So, yeah, it's it's unpredictable and it's uh, and it's something that you can't really predict the outcome. Like even for the guy who's going to win, yeah, you can never say this one guy is going to win. Yeah, you know, it's something that's unique in motorsport because yeah. usually you know the top guys uh, at the back of your hand. Yeah, but in the Dakar, it's so unpredictable. So, so I think many variables that yes. one has to consider while finding out who you know the possible winner is maybe yes. in that way. Yeah, so you have favorites and if I know the favorites aren't going to win, so yeah. uh, it's pretty cool like that. I think that's what actually draws us back to competing in a race right. like that. And cross-country rallies are known for the unpredictability and the crashes mainly. I mean, you had your fair share of accidents, but how do you get back up from them? How do you realize that, yes, I want to win, I want to get back on the bike again? What is that motivation, that fire within you? Well, to race a, a race a rally like the Dakar, you uh, have to understand the risks that you're willing to take. I think all of us uh, make peace with it and um, we don't really think about the worst possible outcome. You always imagine yourself in the best possible outcome. So every time I line up for the, for the start of any valley, I always imagine myself in the best possible position. Yeah. So that's the frame of mind I think all of us kind of have. Right. And you know, this time you were at Hero Motorsport, you, it's a factory team now and you spent multiple years with the bike. How has it changed from your feedback and also with the teammates, Jair Ordinorio, how has it improved over the years? So the um, I have uh, Joaquim, Joaquim Rodriguez, yeah. and uh, Mena as my teammates. Joaquim, of course, is uh, an accomplished supercross rider, and he comes from many years of experience. And of course, Mena is a really strong rider from Spain, uh, who has had the best results in the Dakar. Yeah. Um, with these two guys, we're able to have like really good input for the motorcycle, 
and we're able to actually change the motorcycle a fair bit from the first year competing with Hero at the Dakar to my third year the, this year. The bike was completely different yeah. and it's definitely a motorcycle that I enjoy riding. You know, I always think in a rally like the Dakar, which uh, has varying d levels of difficulty, to be able to enjoy all of that, you need to have a motorcycle that can pretty much do what you want it to do. So yeah. with that, we're able to achieve that in the motorcycle that we have today. To be in tandem with the man and machine being in tandem, you could say in a way? Yeah, I mean, it's a very well-balanced motorcycle this year. Uh, the weight distribution is uh, really low. Uh, it's a safe motorcycle, you know, we have like really good suspension setup and it's a reliable package. Right. And all of these together are important uh, to make the finish of any cross country rally. Right. And see us at this moment in time, we have two Indian rally, uh, Indian rally riders competing in Dhaka. It's you and Arvind KP. This is, a, this is quite a historic moment for Indian uh, cross country rallying. Do you feel that you guys can act as idols for the future generation to encourage them and maybe get into motorsport quite like you have at this moment? Um, I'd say that uh, me and him are kind of shown that it's possible to actually go from being a guy that's competing in India to actually competing in the biggest platform in the world which is the Dakar and lucky for us uh, we have our aspirations backed by the biggest manufacturers here in India yeah. and uh, homegrown manufacturers TBS and Hero so I think it's not just competing at the world level for a manufacturer like Hero mm -hmm it will eventually also come down to them doing something at the grassroots level here in India. Yeah. And that is the big picture. Right. And so CS, uh, finally, just to make uh, to lighten things up, do you have any funny story from your time in cross-country rallying that you'd like to share that no one knows about probably? Any uh, hilarious moments as such? Well, funny stories. I, I don't know about funny stories, but, you know, I think there have been uh, lots of incidents at the Dakar. I think one of the most... Um, you know, profound memories that I have is from my first Dakar when I was racing and it was three countries, Bolivia, Argentina and Chile. Yeah. And I think even till today, I think it's the toughest uh, Dakar that I've ever done. And I remember this place in Bolivia when we were racing, to going into Bolivia from, yeah. from Argentina, I think. And it started to pour, it was raining, it was pissing down oh rain. Yeah. And Bolivia is in the mountains. Yeah. So what happens is when it rains, um, it, it all funnels and they form rivers in places where there shouldn't be rivers and I remember this one part of the stage where there was this massive river yeah it was raging with water and the 20, 20 or 30 pilots that went before me yeah there was no water and then when we we got to this point and it's there was a bank so and there was a raging river yeah and it was just so funny because all of us just lined up on the bank of the river there were like I don't know 20 or 30 pilots all stopped and watching this river and everybody was uh, looking at each other saying who's gonna go first yeah because we had to cross the river to get the other side of course yeah and then everybody's looking to the left and everybody's looking to the right and I didn't speak a word of Spanish I didn't understand Spanish at all or French for the matter of fact back then and we couldn't communicate with each other yeah. so it was quite funny to see who would be the first one to take the bait <laughs> obviously I was one of the first guys that went in because I wanted yeah. to be a hero yeah. and yeah it was it was incredible because that river uh, just just to make the, uh, the other side was a million yeah. task so I think that was pretty cool to think about what happened back then in Bolivia I think one question that always you know is uh, wandering around my mind when you look at those commercials for soft rings when you see you have big mountains to scale and then they have that injection of courage in them. Is it actually like that when you're on the rally? Do you feel it's exactly, do, do they portray it in the way that you actually see it in front of your eyes? Um, injection of courage when you see, oh, yeah, I've got to do that. And you, you know, we all have choices to make and I make that choice every time I'm on the motorcycle. It's a con conscious decision to either uh, look at something and face your fears or you let them let it get the best of you so I think my biggest fear has always been uh, over the last couple of years uh, the riding within my limits mm -hmm. and underperforming yeah and today to step it up and take that chance so I I constantly assess that and I give give myself uh, the necessary push in the right, right direction right and finally CS to conclude Indian motorsport is of course taking off at this moment but there's still a long way to go for us what do you think would be the strategy for Indian motorsport and in particular off-road riders to go forward and you know help India put, to help put India even further on the motorsport map? So currently, with me or KP competing at the Dakar, that's the pinnacle of off-road racing. 
yeah, sure, it's it's great to look up and see uh, me and him competing there. But we need to bridge the gap from that hmm. to where we are here in India. Right. And that can only happen with awareness and uh, actually some sort of responsibility from the manufacturers also. Right. So I think with uh, Hero, I'm, I'm really confident with the plans that they have in India. Right. They will have a wide footprint uh, in this direction and also to be able to enable the population to have a product that can actually allow somebody to go and ride off-road. So right. All this is in, in, in the making and all this is exciting because it's going to happen in the next few years. Right. And um, I think it's only going to grow from strength. Right. Awesome. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I feel so happy to say this. This was CS Santosh on Life in the Fast Lane. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. It was so amazing to have you here. So you can subscribe to all of my social media platforms and also of CS. Once again, thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Keep watching. Cheers.